Hi, we're going to start up here in the front. It has a seven way holder to keep your seven way up off the ground so it doesn't get corroded. We have a black switch on the right side of the front compartment that turns your LED lights on the front of the trailer on. In the front metal, in the front compartment, it does have a metal floor. It has your hydraulic pump. That hydraulic pump can be manually cranked up or down with a quarter inch Allen stock. You can put it in your drill or you can run it by hand. It works pretty easy. You also have your Swintec uh, controls are in the top, mounted in the top of the front compartment. We'll start down the side over here. On your auto leveling, we're going to turn it on. We're going to scroll up. There's your manual leveling. You have to hit enter to begin. We're going to go to auto retract. You have to hit enter to begin on the auto retract. Auto hitch height, same way. You have to hit enter before it starts. We're going to go back to where it says ready. We're going to raise the front jacks up. We're going to go back to the auto level. And then you just stand back and watch it do its thing. It's going to ground the front jacks all the way down. So you want to make sure your vehicle's out from underneath the front of it before you start the auto leveling. Can't have any movement inside the trailer. Every time it adjusts one of the jacks, it'll analyze itself and then do whatever it needs to do to correct it. When it gets all the way done, it'll say auto level success. In between, every time it moves one of the jacks side to side, front to back, it analyzes itself and now it says auto level success. You can take a four foot level and put it in the kitchen floor. Front to back will be level and side to side will both be level. On your level up, it does have instructions on the door itself. It walks you through how to hook the trailer up and how to disconnect the instructions for that. It pretty well walks you through everything that you need to know on it. You also have your two battery, how they hook up. So that if you take your batteries off in the winter time and forget to put them back on, it does show you exactly how to properly install those. It is vented to the outside. Since it has the two batteries on the inside, it has to have a way to vent the fumes from the inside out. We're gonna go over to our water leveling, our water fill compartment. It does have a battery disconnect. Each side of the compartment has a light that is motion sensor so that when you open the door the light automatically comes on we also have solar panel up on the roof that is your digital readout for the solar panel it tells you exactly how much the sunlight's putting out to the batteries and once it gets full it'll also say full on there instead of 13 2. we're going to come back to the water fill compartment it does have a canister on the outside the filter for the canister is in the second drawer down in the kitchen area we have a galley tank handle that is your kitchen sink water only. Right down below that, we have a black tank flush. And that black tank flush is for the main one in the master bathroom. We have a second black tank flush down here at the bottom for the half bath. We do have an outside shower. It's got hot and cold running water to it. Blue hose hooks on here and actually hooks on over by the front door too but it only gives you cold water on the front door. Each one of the scenarios that's on the map here shows you how to power fill the tank, which way the valves have to be turned to fill the fresh water tank. We also have the valves turned so that you can dry camp and pull water from the fresh water tank to the faucets. We also have the city water hookup. We also have the winterizing hookup so that you can winterize the trailer through the city water and then a sanitation 
for sanitation is for the water lines on the inside once they've had antifreeze how to pump a little uh, bleach through the lines to get the taste of the antifreeze out of them the winterization will go through this side over here your black tank flush for your half bath is the one at the bottom and there is a plug in the bottom of the compartment so that when you get ready to hook your uh, satellite cables up or your water lines it can come up through the bottom come up and hook to your connections that way you can leave the big door shut little plug just plugs it back off I'm gonna stick the hose right back in here in the water compartment there is also a light switch on the right hand side that turns light on so you can see how to operate at nighttime and then you have your fresh water drain is underneath that front compartment it is the big two inch white valve and if your tank's full, I'm going to forewarn you, you better pull the valve and step back because it puts out an awful lot of water coming out onto the ground. On the next one is your furnace. It's going to suck cold air in the back side, hot air out the front side. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace. For the simple fact, the screen's less than 15 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that somebody has to take the furnace out and clean the mud daubers out of it. So that $15 investment's worth its weight in gold if you ask me. The next one is the outside of the InstaHeat hot water heater. For it to work, it has to have the switch in the left hand position has to be on. And that controls the controls on the inside that lights those up and let them know that it's ready to, for, to make hot water. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on out here on the outside. It does have water in the unit. That way I can show you the controls on the inside. We do have our two low water drain points. The blue side is the cold, cold side of the water system. The red is the hot side of the water system. We have the termination valve right behind the middle jack. The galley tank handle is up in the front water compartment, but you have a black tank handle just up underneath here right before it goes to the frame. Way up there. But it does have a sticker on the side of it that says black tank. That'll be your half black, your half tank in the middle of the trailer and then half bath. The lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 110 pounds. That's what's recommended on the side of these. And they are air to pressure, which is 80 pounds on the side of the tire coat. They also have the nitro gas in them. But if you're out on the road and one of them would happen to come a little low, you can put air in on top of it. It also has a tire monitoring system on the trailer already. The Controls for it will be in your truck. I'll have to show you that when you get here with the vehicle. Got one more termination valve here just behind the axles. The three handles for it is in the round hole here to the side. There is a gray, a black, and a second gray. The first gray is your bathroom shower and water. The black handle is your main toilet water in the master bathroom. And the last handle is for your outside kitchenette. For the outside sink. The little handle here goes on, just screws on in place out of the way. We're going to open up the door to the big compartment. It does strut assisted so it holds itself up. Blue handle on the left hand side of the tray lifts up, allows the tray to come out at it and gives you a lot of storage and you can actually get to the back of it so that you got to put more storage into the unit. We're going to slide it back in. And it won't slide all the way out. It does have stops and stops after it comes out so far. Your 50 amp power cord goes onto the trailer, makes a quarter of a turn, and tighten up the black knob. On the other end of the corner, it does have blue lights on it, indicating that it has power coming to it. The last compartment on this side over here is your back, your main big compartment in the back. It does have a 110 outlet just inside the compartment. We're going to go to the very back door of it. An awful lot of storage in the back compartment can be stored on either side, up in the front and the lower section of it. It is prepped for a backup camera up top, and it is also prepped for a ladder. Uh, the ladder is an option that you can buy if you wanted to carry it with you. My main concern about that is the roof is the life expectancy of the trailer. Anything happens to the roof up on top, it will start showing on the four corners inside or out. The quicker you can repair a problem with the roof, the better off you are. It did get lap sealed when we PDI'd the trailer, so it should be in good shape for the next 90 days. 
but after 90 days, it wouldn't hurt to go back up and look at it just to make sure that nothing's happened up on the roof. The roof is the life expectancy of the trailer. On this side here, you have a light switch. It turns a little set of LED lights through the center of the basement compartment and another 110 outlet on this side over here. It also has the quick disconnect for the LP line. If you had an outside fish fryer or a barbecue pit that you wanted to use with the trailer, it works off the two bottles on the front. But for that connection to work, it does have a T handle on top that has to be turned in line with the gas line coming out for it to have gas coming through it. You do have your two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about that on the stereo when we get to the inside to determine if you're playing the speakers inside or out. Next one up is the outside kitchenette. In your outside kitchenette, there is a light switch on the wall that turns the LED strip on above it. We do have a 110 outlet on the right hand side that is also <coughs> GFI protected by the outlet in the bathroom. We got pretty good sized cabinet space up at the top for lots and lots of goodies. And an outside sink. Hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. We also have an outside refrigerator that is 110 only. Has to be plugged into 110 for this refrigerator to cool down on the outside. But it does have a little freezer section up in the top and it gives you a little ice tray that you can make ice for the outside. And it is strapped in place during travel. We'll strap that back down when we get ready to close the trailer up. It does have another 110 outlet on this side of the trailer up in the front. It does have the porch spray that the same blue hose that has your outside uh, shower on the other side. We'll come over and connect to this side here. But it only gives you cold water on this side of the trailer. One more compartment up here in the front. They do have motion sensored lights, but there is another 110 outlet and a park cable or antenna hookup so that you can put a TV out here in the front compartment or underneath the awning. We'll close that door. We're going to open up the gas bottles. On the gas bottles, it does have a little lever here at the front. You have to turn to the left hand side to pull out. Brings it out, clicks it into place. Your gas regulator showing you that it's red on the inside. As soon as you turn the gas valve open, sure turn green. Indicating that the arrow it's pointed to is working off of that bottle. As soon as this bottle would happen to come empty, it will automatically pick up from the bottle behind it if the valve on the top is on. Still gonna show you red inside the eye that the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the other one. Then all you have to do is flip it over to that side there, work off of that bottle while you take this one to town and have it refilled. Same way here, you gotta push in on the valve to get the gas bottles to go back in. They click into place. We're gonna shut the door and we're gonna go up to this door. Once you're on the spot, level from side to side, front to back, the next thing is the proper fit of the door. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open the door fully extended. We're gonna grab a hold of the black handle in the center and pull out on it. The steps have strut assist so that you don't have to lift the whole way to the steps. It actually helps you itself, but it does have push buttons underneath each one of the legs. There's 15 to 18 holes in the bottom of the legs for the adjustment of the steps. The main thing on the steps is once they come out and lay down, they need to lay flat in the threshold. That way you get the door to fit over the top of them properly. And to achieve that, you push the buttons underneath the legs let this lay flat and then adjust the legs to the ground level. We're going to step up inside the trailer. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side. I'm going to go ahead and kick the main lights on inside here. And then we're going to run our awnings out. Our, we can run the awning out first. We're going to extend it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn them awning lights on too. Go back in. It's, it's hitting the door. There you go. Now you're in. It's always good to make sure there's not a tree on that side or that you're too close to the next trailer. And your skirt should hang straight up and down when it's fully extended. On the awning, each one of the arms has a bottom bar that you can pull down on to put the pitch of the rain coming to that side, the back side, our front. 
Most of the time you'll want to put it towards the back that way you don't have the water dripping off your canopy right in front of your front door. But it has the bar has to be pushed back up straight in line before you run the awning back in. And on a real windy day, I'd always prefer that you put the awning back up if you're not using it. The awning's one of the more expensive pieces you have to put on the trailer. A lot of people like to leave them out 24 seven, but it is something that can be ripped off the trailer with wind or rain. I'm gonna take that back in. Oops. There you are. We do have an inverter in the trailer to power it up. All you have to do is push and hold the button on the inside. Then it'll come on and it'll tell you what the two batteries are putting out to make 110. It's got 13 volts in it right now. To turn it off, since we are plugged into the shore cord, we're gonna push in and hold for just a minute. And that's for the solar? And that is for your uh, inverter. Cool. Then we're gonna come back to the two light switches here. One turns the lights above the sink on. The other one turns your set of lights in the living room area on. We're gonna go ahead and run the door side slide room out. We say our Swintec motors. <coughs> now we're going to run the off door side swin tech motor out. <coughs> <coughs> And then we're gonna run the bedroom slide out. We have the door closed on the bedroom slide so you can't actually see it coming out. You can hear it, but it will go out as far as it needs to and it loads up and shuts itself off. There we go. And then your main slide, which will be the two slides here in the kitchen area. Now they're hydraulic. And the hydraulic flood goes to whichever one it'll move easiest. There is a couple of doors on the side that has a refrigerator that you can look at. Just to visually make sure that they're shut. And then your door for your half bath. You want to visually make sure that it's shut before you run your main slides out. Gives you quite a bit of space in the living or kitchen area. Once those slide rooms come out, the hydraulic motor loads up just a little bit. We're gonna come back up to the top. Your main entry lights is the lights here in the kitchen area. You have an entry light that was an amber light above the front door. Hall light turns the hallway light on and the hallway going to the master bathroom. We have a step light underneath the steps that comes on and you can connect to Wi-Fi if you want and work it off of your cell phone. Back up here on the monitor panel, as it reads, this tells you how much water is in your freshwater tank and as it fills, it starts out red, it turns orange, orange, and then goes all green like the battery is when it's the freshwater tank's full. Black tank one is your master bathroom in the back of the trailer. Black tank two is your half bath toilet water galley tank is your kitchen sink water gray tank one will be your master bathroom shower and sink water gray tank two will be your outside kitchen sink water and as they fill up they turn orange first the two buttons turn orange 
When they go all the way to the top, they all turn red, indicate that the tank is completely full. Battery level shows you on the right-hand side that the battery is fully charged. We have a water pump switch that turns the water pump on between your fresh water tank and the faucets. When it's on, it is blue, just like the lights are. Then you also have a set of tank heaters underneath each one of the five holding tanks underneath the trailer. The blue light's on on it when it's on. Then you have your awning, your main slide room, your bedroom slide, your do off door side slide room, and your door side slide room. We're going to go back to the hot water heater. We're going to turn it on. It tells you the temperature of the water that it'll send out. You can dial your temperature up and down on it. For this to work on the inside, the switch on the outside of the hot water heater has to be in the on position for this one to work on the inside. And as you're using it, it will tell you the degree of the water coming through the faucets. We also have a tire monitoring system that we're going to put in your vehicle when you get here that monitors the tires on the trailer. We have a central vacuum cleaner that you can lift up, put your hoses in there, button up the tire and put it on and off. Breaker box is right down below that. That breaker box is marked with what it has in it from the top to the bottom. Refrigerator, GFI, general purpose, microwave, dryer, main AC, main in the center, fireplace, second AC, the washer compartment, and the converter is the bottom one. They're all marked as what they are, and your car fuses are up here marked as what they are. Back to that shop back, there is a bag with all the little goodies in it for the central vacuum system with a 50-foot hose that you can do on the inside or outside compartments. Several different hose attachments. I think there's four to five different hose attachments in underneath there, underneath the kitchen sink. We're going to come back and walk down this side here. It does have a light switch up on the ceiling that turns the accent lighting above the slide room on. The light above the table has a little push button in the center of it. We have a little bit of storage underneath each one of the seats. The seats can be strapped down and we also have a 110 outlet off in the corner. You do have the GFI outlet for the kitchen area behind the sink. The little light down here at the bottom turns a little accent lighting on underneath the countertop. We also have our carbon monoxide detector and LP detector down to bottom. <coughs> As we step up into the master bathroom or bedroom area, it does have a light switch that lights up the steps. We have our thermostat that controls the main EC in the front of the trailer. When we turn it on, it's going to give us our fan speeds. You got fan speed low, high. We're going to go to cool, cool low, cool auto, and cool high. You'll dial your temperature down for the AC in the living room area. Hit the mode button one more time. It says heat in the lower left-hand corner. You'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit that mode button one more time and it should say off in the lower right-hand corner. As we come up into the bedroom area, the bed has a split mattress on it. It should have been folded up. Out of the way as the slide room comes in. <coughs> light switch on the wall we do have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a USB port on the right hand side we have the second thermostat on the wall just like the one in the hallway except for this one over here does not have the heat on it it just has the AC for the bedroom and off we have another 110 outlet on the side of the table here Mounted the second TV up on top. I think it said it got 42 channels the other day after we mounted it on there. You do have pretty good size closet space on either side. And four or two drawers on this side over here. The two light switches on the wall by the bed. One turns your lights above the pillows on. The second one illuminates the light around the headboard. Them light switches are on the wall. We're going to go into the bathroom area. Two more light switches on the wall in here. We do have a fan for the vent in the ceiling. It has an on and off button. Turn it on, let it run, turn it off. But on that vent, 
It also has an open and closed over here on the side that has to be opened up for it to bring the air from the inside out. And it's for the air for the moisture from the toilet. We do also have a 110, two out, 110 outlets up by the bathroom sink, the dual sinks. We have two vents bringing AC into the master bathroom. We also have a register on the floor that brings heat into the master bathroom. And the main thing on your sliding doors on the shower, when it's in travel, it has to be locked into place to keep the doors from slamming back and forth. Same way with your shower at home. We have hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. It does have an upgraded shower head. It does have a dome up in the top for the taller guys. That's not me. <laughs> me either. In the washer dryer area is the box for the TV in the living room. We have the two connections for the water lines. The red's the hot side, the blue's the cold side, and the one in the center is the drain for it. Two 110 outlets in the back to plug the washer and dryer in. But on this one, it also has a GFI breaker for the washer and dryer too. If the washer and dryer is in and it's plugged in, you won't be able to reach back there. So they put two more outlets up here at the front so that you could reset them if for any reason they would blow a clip of breaker on or off. We're gonna shut that back in. All the doors in the bathroom area have to be locked in place for travel to keep them from slamming back and forth. We do have quite a bit of space underneath the cabinets in the back drawers cabinet space off to the left hand side quite a bit of cabinet space in the bathroom and those are self-closing doors cabinet doors and drawers you let it come about halfway shut it'll automatically close itself no slamming doors no and slamming bites. doors no no but if you bring it back almost shut just let go of it it automatically shuts itself the drawers are the same way we do have a vent in the floor for the master bath or bedroom. Two vents in the master bedroom to bring AC into it. We do have the quick cool down on either side of the AC so we can let all the cold air come right into the master bedroom area. When it gets cold in the half in here, you can shut those back off and it goes back to the round vents in the ceiling. The air conditioner in the back will vent all the way to the vents in the living room area too. Same way with the living room air conditioner, it vents all the way back to the bathroom area. So you only really have to run one air conditioner at a time if that's all you need at the time. The mattress should be folded up before you run the slide room in, but it lays right back down. And it is folded to the foot area instead of the headboard area for when you bring it in. We're gonna flip that back up. The pedestal here does not have storage underneath it. It stays stationary while the bed comes over the top of it. But if you look from the side, there is storage underneath that pedestal that you can store extra pillows and blankets underneath the bed that won't be crushed when the slide room comes in. It stays open underneath there. There's another board that comes over the top of the bed as the bedroom comes in. We're gonna go back down into the half bath. In the half bath, there is a switch on the wall to turn the light on. There's a fan in the ceiling that turns on just like the one in the other bathroom did. Top button turns it on. Same way here, you got it open and closed up at the top. I leave it in the open position. Then I hit the off button. We do have a 110 outlet on the right hand side that is also GFI protected by the outlet in the kitchen. Single foot flush on the right hand side of the toilet. Should have instructions on the back of the toilet lid. Fill halfway full of water, do your business, and push the foot, the pedal all the way down. Fills and dumps. We also are getting AC into the half bath. No heat. I thought it had heat too. Here again, we have another Max Air fan that's right above the stove. It turns on by hand. Vent has to be in the open position up top and then a button to turn it off. The white connection right down below that is for the ceiling fan. By the entry doors that comes in, it gives you three speeds on it and can be turned on and off with the switch or just pull it all the way down and it shuts itself off too. The light above the microwave turns on, gives you illumination accent lighting above the slide room. There is a light on the microwave for the stove top and there is also a vent with two different speeds on it, high and low. Turn the light off, 
on the stove you have a button on the right hand side that turns the light on panel lighting turn it to the light position should light all four burners up on top Oops. and then the one in the center is for the oven now the oven takes just a little bit longer you'll turn it to where it says pilot on keep holding down on the button if you look towards the back you can see the pilot's lit let it run for just about a minute then dial your temperature up for what you want you can see the flames burning in the griddle showing that it is actually working and the light so you can see the biscuits or the brownies however which way you want to do it cooking pizza we're going to turn the light off for the oven parallel lighting turns all the lights on on the griddle Two sets of keys to the trailer. The purple key does the lock and deadbolt on the front door. The gray key does all the other outside compartments on it. We're gonna to step to the refrigerator next. When you open it up, it's gonna tell you the temperature of the freezer and the refrigerator section at the top. It also has an ice maker, so we can turn ice on plus. Gives us ice down in the bottom, and it should have ice in it. It was run overnight. That's the ice that it made overnight. Worst thing about that is it still has to be winterized in the winter time. So you'll need to take your filter out when you get ready to winterize it. Run your antifreeze through, leave it on for at least two and a half hours. It will cycle every two and a half hours to make ice. Usually takes two cycles before you get good pink up into the trays inside. Let's see, pretty good kit size cabinet space off to the side of there in the bottom. These two doors, you want to make sure close all the way before you run the slide rooms in or out. We're going to step up into the living room area. Each one of the chairs has a little push button tap on the side to turn the lights on on the cup holders. And turns a little set of LED lights underneath the recliners. We hung your picture on the wall where the other picture was. Left that picture on the table there, or on the couch there. Each one of the slide rooms has a light switch that turns the two lights above the couches on. We do have a fire escape window on either side. To extend the couches out, we're going to pull the Velcro off the cushions off the back. We're going to lift up on them, pull it out, set each one of the legs down. Fold the back of the couch down to make the head of it. You can put your two cushions back up at the top behind your pillows if you want. Both bunks on the couches can be pulled out in place at the same time. It just says that you can't run your fireplace when you got the two bunks out. It puts too much heat against the side of the couches. We're going to stick these back up. Fold the legs back in. Take the two back cushions back up against the top. Each one of the slide rooms has little windows off to the side so that if it's not real hot out, you can open the side windows up. Put you a little breeze blowing across through here. You do have a 110 outlet on either side of the TV in the front. Shade for the front window. The little remote does the fireplace. Red button turns it on. You can change the temperature of the heat from low to high to off. You can change the color of the rocks in the bottom. When you turn the rocks to where they're green, they will rotate between all the colors. But you have to have them in the green position for that to keep rotating. You can change the flames. One to four settings. You also have a timer that you can put for 30 minutes one hour i think it goes up to nine hours and then it'll automatically shut itself off that way if you fall asleep with it on you don't have to worry about it burning anything down because it will shut itself off middle size remote turns the stereo stereo comes on 
6666. You have A speakers for your auditorium, B speakers for your bedroom, or C speakers for outside. And I'm going to turn the two inside ones off so you can hear the outside two speakers. It'll also play a DVD between the stereo and the TV. The main thing for that is whatever you're playing on the DVD, if you have your outside speakers on, they'll be able to hear it on the outside of the trailer too. It also has Bluetooth and can be hooked up to the TV. We're going to take it over to the TV side. Bluetooth and TV. Now we're going to run the TV up. And I'm, I know it got 42 channels on the TV in the living room. But that station's 80 miles away from here. That's not too bad of a picture on the TV. Wait, does that mean that I'm a manatee right now? Big time manatee. And if I'm not mistaken, it got 42 channels on the TV. Channel 36.2. It also tells you what channel you turned it to. Let's go to channel two because that's an 80 mile an hour channel. or 80 mile station from here too. Channel 2.2 antenna. Channel 2.1. That's what everybody likes to get their nightly news on. So that's not too bad for a TV working off the antenna on top in the power booster in the master bedroom. We'll go ahead and shut it off. Uh, don't think there's anything in the cabinets on the side. It's just like a corner shelving. It does have the two down at the bottom. They are the self-closing doors. AC in the living room has the quick cool downs on the front of it too that brings all the cold air down into the living room area. Once the living room area gets cold enough that you're Happy with that. You can close these back off and it goes back to the round vents in the ceiling. And that's basically everything on the trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.